Rick's Corner. The man, the myth, the legend. Now on with the show. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is for you that you tune this in. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails and comments about the high protein, low carb diet that we did back in the golden era. And everybody has an opinion, which is fine with me. And many people said it's a wrong diet, it's not good for you, and you shouldn't be doing this, and shouldn't be doing that. But the proof is in the bodies. Of the 70s they had the best bodies and they had the diet that worked for them it wasn't any of these counting macros and counting calories and counting this and counting that it wasn't working out with the medicine ball it wasn't doing any of those things at all it was basically high protein low carb so somebody had asked what about vegetables and fiber well you could have vegetables if you like and fiber ever not i've made it a point to have metamucil at bedtime i think it's a great fiber and uh, you do need fiber when you have a high protein diet. You need, you need a little bit of carbs anyway. Your kidneys uh, need it, your body needs it, and you just can't function totally without it. Now, <clears throat> some people do. They'll go for weeks without any carbs before a contest, and they'll shred themselves of water, just eat tuna and everything else. Is it healthy? No. Nobody ever said that bodybuilding was healthy. It's not healthy. It's a lifestyle, and it's about building muscle and looking a certain way but it doesn't mean you're healthy. And this is why so many bodybuilders get sick and they have a lot of problems because aside from everything else they do, they're not eating healthy. They're eating huge amounts of food, huge amounts of beef and protein and eggs, um, and it's hard on the body. Now, we would eat uh, back then, like I said, eggs. We'd eat the whole eggs, maybe a dozen a day, half a dozen to a dozen a day, split up between the day, of course, and uh, ground beef with cheese on it on a little hibachi barbecue. Uh, a small salad with some, I like the Bob's Ranch dressing or Bob's, I think it was blue cheese dressing, it was really good. Um, and cottage cheese. Cottage cheese was a staple because cottage cheese has a tremendous amount of protein. Also, it does have a lot of sodium, this I know. But our diet consisted of that. Now, I had a Presto burger, which some of you guys have mentioned to me. <clears throat> Where you put the meat in there and you close it for about a minute and a half and it fries both sides of the meat. Made by Presto. It's actually a really good cooker. And I'd have that in the morning with my eggs and then my oatmeal and then off to the gym. And then after the gym, it would be time to go eat. Now, we didn't have protein drinks in the gym. We didn't actually take a lot of protein because there was really not much available. Real Blair had some. It was extremely expensive. Bob Hoffman had some that I don't think was any good. Some of the health food stores had them, and who knows what that was. I, I don't know. I, one of them was dehydrated fish powder. But it was basically real food that we ate. Now... We'd eat at home, but we'd also eat in restaurants because in a restaurant, and if you're alone, you don't want to cook every night. It's just boring by yourself. So I would find things to eat in restaurants that I knew were good for me, and I'd tell them to use very little oil or grease when they fry it or whatever they make, and it worked out okay. Um, pretty much all of us followed that same diet. Now, what works for us may not work for you. What works for you may not work for us. Not everybody can take the same medicine or the same diet. This is the way it is, even in the medical field. The doctor doesn't give everybody the same medicine unless he's pushing that product for a pharmaceutical company, which happens a lot, by the way. And I'll take this, this will help you. It helped everybody else, but then it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> it was hard training, 20 sets of body part, 18 to 20 sets, maybe 25 on some. Two body parts a day, two body parts, well, two body parts a day, twice a week. Um, and you had recovery time in between, and you also ate. Now, I would go with some of the guys over to Zuki's Deli. We, I've talked about this a lot to you on 5th and Wilshire. It was a gathering place. Back then, everybody kind of met up and had coffee and just had a good time, just like people do today in clubs. And uh, it was around 10, 10.30 at night, and I'd have a cheese omelet with cottage cheese. And I think Arnold did too, and a few other guys. Have the protein before you go to bed, and that protein is going to work on your body and help you rebuild all the muscle. I didn't have any carbs, just that. If I wanted sweet stuff, I found Jello, but Jello was made by Deserta and it had no sugar, and it tasted exactly like Jello. Still sweet and just satisfied my needs. Fruit I would eat separately, say strawberries, peaches, and bananas, which I really like. I would eat by themselves in mid-afternoon. I wouldn't mix them with the protein because they create too much acid with the protein. 
those kind of things work pretty well. On Saturday night, uh, would be starting up Sunday's junk day. So I would treat myself, whoever I was with, to Chuck's Steakhouse or the Chart House in Malibu. You guys got to go there, by the way. You guys got to go there. They have a big salad bar, which is unlimited. Teriyaki sirloin steak and this brown rice that has teriyaki sirloin, teriyaki uh, sauce in it, and fresh sourdough bread. I mean, I lived for that Saturday night. Now, you're not going to get fat in one night, and it worked really well, and it tasted so good. I was so happy to have it. Sunday would roll along. It'd be a junk day for a lot of people. Some people eat a whole quart or half a gallon of ice cream like Ken Waller did, or pizza all day long. But I never did that. I ate normal, and then dinner would be like a brisket of beef um, with some rice, maybe jello mold that my, my wife would make at the time and put bananas in it, and then a cheesecake. And then after a while, I stopped doing that because it got to be so indigestible that Monday I was so bloated I had to crawl around my hands and knees. Not really, but I felt bloated. <clears throat> my Tuesday, I was back down to weight, all the water out of me from the diet, and back to go. So today's diets, uh, you have the Paleo, the Atkins, which I've talked about, the Keto diet, um, the Beverly Hills diet, and they're, like I said before, they're all based off the bodybuilding diet. Bodybuilders were the first to establish life a fitness of health. They would train, lay in the sun, and eat properly. Um, cream, fats, avocados, egg yolks were all good sources of energy. If you wanted to burn energy, that's a good source without getting fat. And it worked for the guys back in the 50s and 40s, and it works today. Your body doesn't change over the years. Your body is the same body that's been around for decades. It's a human body, and whatever you put into it, it's going to get a result. Now, you can put other stuff into it and tell me I'm wrong, it doesn't work for you, and maybe I am wrong. Maybe it doesn't work for you. I'm not trying to tell you to do it, that it's definitely going to work for you, but it's worth a try. I'm just telling you what we did and what worked for me, and you can take that and you know, do whatever you want with it. I'm just giving you information that, you know, there's not many of us guys left. I look around, a lot of my friends are gone. So I have this show to pass forward the information that we had back then as best as I can. I remember a lot of stuff and I figured I'd leave it to the next generation so that at least they could learn something from me and have good benefit from it because I wish somebody would have taught me. I had no one behind me that knew anything. Um, anyway, this is how the diet worked. Uh, half a chicken, sometimes go to the Jamaica Bay and half a chicken with a salad. Um, one time I got it, it was still frozen in the middle and had green stuff in it. Like, what the hell is that? I can't eat that. So, um, eggs, chicken, tuna fish, a lot of tuna fish out of the can. Um, beef patties, lean on the barbecue with a slice of American cheese, the real American cheese, not this phony stuff they sell in the markets. Uh, and cottage cheese, and basically cheese omelets, and that was a diet. Now, you could add vegetables. I like, uh, I would like broccoli or something like that, although I've become very accustomed to asparagus, which I like, and it's diuretic. Always good to take fiber. <clears throat> you can't go wrong with some sort of fiber. Trader Joe's sells a good one. The drugstore sells Metamucil, the orange flavor, which just is good, because you gotta keep everything moving through your body, and that's how it works. Now, supplements, I have a ton of supplements from old school labs that I take and there's a bunch that I really like. I don't want to add any more because I'm taking so much I'm not sure what's working and what's not working. Then I want to say one more thing. I went down to uh, Venice last two Saturdays ago and there was a beach contest. <clears throat> they do very well. They draw about 2,000 people. A friend of mine stopped to see me and he was all spray tanned dark, really dark. And I said to him, I said, you know, it's so different today than it was back in the day. The lifestyle, the sun, the sand, the fitness, and the diet was basically healthy. Although sun is not healthy today, I got skin cancer. But we didn't know that then. Laying in the sun gave you that nice glow, and you get up on stage and you'd pose and you look great. You didn't have to use, well, they came out with dioderm, which was one thing. And then you don't have to use a spray tan because it makes you so dark, you look muddy and you look like everybody else. You can't touch them. They're all like orange and brown and all these weird colors. And we used to say, oh, how the black guys, they had just great definition, which they do because their skin was dark. And I was talking to a guy in the gym, this black guy said, it's, it's, it's a known fact that you guys are ripped, but the darkness brings out all the cuts and under the oil and the lights, they look even better. So I said, all the white guys want to be like you. They're just doing the spray tan all over and trying to get the cuts. And it works, but it's just phony. That's phony, and, and it's too bad that it can't go back to the way it was back in the day when we used to have a contest in Venice and they were out in the open air and you had a great tan. So that's just something I wanted to talk about. If you ever get down to Venice um, and you have these ideals of what it is, you're going to be disappointed because it's not what it was 30, 40 years ago. It was clean, it was fun, there were no vendors, there were no 
uh, police substations. There was no crime. You could walk on the beach at 2 in the morning. Nobody would bother you. Now you go down there and there's gangs and knife fights and shootings and all kinds of stuff. And I won't even go. It's just not even worth it for me to go down there and try to walk through a crowd. There, there's pickpockets. There's oh, anything you name down there. It's down there because it's a public place. And it attracted everybody from across the United States to hang out in Venice. So I don't mean to get it a bad rap, but it's not, just not what it used to be. It's sad to say. It's just not what it used to be. Anyway, that's my thing, and I wanted to share it with you because I thought you guys deserved to know the truth because the truth is the truth, and you can't bend the truth. So stay tuned for more. I'll bring you uh, some more people next week, I hope. And um, I'm not quite sure who. I do have a few, a few lined up. I just got to see what falls into place on my days. And please subscribe. I'm almost 100,000 viewers. All I need is another 25, and then uh, YouTube sends me this nice big plaque, which I want to I get. All right, guys, thanks for watching Risk Corner. I love all of you. Have a great day and a great week. Think positive. Remember, whatever you put out there will come back to you. You put out positive vibes, they're going to come back positive. And I believe that 100%. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson, personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.